Hello, I'm Anosai. I usually hide behind this channel, but since I hit 10,000 subscribers, I open the floor to questions, including ones about me. Let's go through all of them. Robochow1 asks, uh, Did you do any VGM rips before this channel was an established thing? Uh, I did not. He also asked, What's the one game soundtrack that you've listened to longer than anything else? Or specifically the one that pulled you into all this? That'd be probably Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Makyo, Tatsu, whatever. This thing. That soundtrack came up pretty quickly when I started actually digging through the Mega Drive music, and it was like confirmation that, yep, this was a this was an amazing idea. But the soundtrack that actually got me started on the dig, or the idea for it all, was Thunder Force 4. Cause why are these amazing guitars hiding from me? I've gotta find everything. Basic Caveman asks, what is your favorite video game system and why? Which uh uh hmm. I'm gonna go with the Dreamcast just because it's a fascinating final hoorah from Sega. It's like it, it was a bit ahead of its time and had a really neat Y2K sort of vibe. And also it was the home of Dead Set Radio! <laughs> Harrison asks, what is your absolute favorite game OST of all time and why? I can't th there's too much. I can't pick a favorite. I don't know. Flock. That said, though, I'm, uh, I'm really happy to read that, like, through my channel, someone has gotten interested in music theory. That's that's neat to me. Never stop learning, all right? RT55J asks, what are some of your favorite modern chiptune artists? And the names that came to mind were uh, Chi Chi. Uh, Lucas Erickson. Faraday. And maybe Virgil if he qualifies. I realized you'd mean modern as in recent, and almost all of these happen to have a modern classical sound. I just happen to really like that sound when you apply it to, like, chiptune tamper. RT55J asks, What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Vanilla, but with chocolate chip cookies hand crumbled and mixed in? Or, uh, if that doesn't count, uh, I don't know, mint? Bub Express asks, Who is your favorite composer of all time? And I'm not sure it's possible to answer this one. Like, maybe Tim Fullen? Maybe that's too obvious? Pipe Op asks, Who's your favorite composers on Genesis? And uh, there's too many to pick from. Akihata, though. Her Genesis work is, like, really scarce, but really beautiful. Who did some of the best drums on the Genesis using only FM synth? Maybe it's an odd choice, but the first thing that comes to mind is the snare from Wonder Boy 3, Monster Lair. Uh, specifically the tune, Island. It's, it's this like two-channel sound, and it's just... I don't know, I like it. it. It stands out to me. Who's your favorite composer from the demo scene? Uh, I'm gonna go with Nags, even though I just said Virgil. Nags is a big influence of mine, like from his silly chip tunes to his trippy future sounds, but especially the latter. And uh, he's even been active uh, recently, which has been a treat. Matthew Fio asks, what mix is your favorite? I'm gonna go with Bad Trip. I had a lot of fun putting it together and I think it shows. I think the first few minutes are about as perfect as I think I can make a mix. Blast Prog is another favorite though because I just love the proggy nonsense. And it starts out super strong with like 2316. I don't know, it's fun. Ashra Demji asks, are there any tracks made with the OPL chips that you like? So, 
ages ago, there was this place called the 8-Bit Collective, and one of the guys that posted there a lot was Oxygen Star. He specialized in really good ad-lib tunes. Uh, he seems to have like disappeared from the internet recently, but I love his work. Left Out in particular always stood out to me as just a really beautiful tune. Actually, uh, as an aside, uh, he put together a compilation album of uh, just people making FM music at the time, and that would be the first release I ever actually appeared on, and that was 11 years ago now, basically gone from the internet. Kind of weird to think about. Hmm. Anyway, another time I dug up this like old laptop that had an OPL3 chip, or, or, or like a knockoff, I guess and just rendered a ton of tunes using that because hardware FM synthesis is way better than emulated, especially when you get to like, you know, high feedback and that kind of stuff. From that set, uh, Vibrations 2 by Phenadryl is like a big favorite. But also, Drax made a ton of really funky tunes I also dig. Bus. As far as games, uh, I only know what I've seen from my artist features. Uh, KGB was pretty good. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny hearing the more industrial side of Frank Kaplaki kind of sneak out and uh, Cry Randia 2. As for Game Boy, uh, it's gonna be sooner than Ablib since I want to go to PSG next, but who knows. So I got several questions about what sound hardware I prefer, like both listening and making, and broadly the answer is it depends on what the song is trying to be. So for example, any Streets of Rage game will lean into the FM sound and be better for it. But if you want stabs in your music, you're gonna want some sort of PCM sound chip. Uh, PSG is best if you want to focus on harmonies in particular. I mean, polyphony limit might come into play, but the sounds are too pure, so the harmonies are more emphasized, which is really nice in my opinion. Final answer, lean into whatever the song is trying to be. asks, What composer would you say consistently brought the YM2612 to its absolute limit? I'm gonna go with Jesper Kid because that guy knew what the strengths of FM were, which kind of leans back to my next question. He knew what the FM could do, and he pushed it that direction, and some of his FM sounds were like ahead of their time in my opinion. The only real downside to his tunes are that the percussion sounds like they were limited by that FM focus. Like DAC snares maybe would have been nice, maybe. But everything else is just top of the line in my opinion. Mice for Brewer asks, Was there ever enough material to make a mix out of those porn game soundtracks? Uh, not really. <laughs> Most of those ROMs were just slideshows without music. You could probably string a few songs together, but I don't think it'd be enough for like a coherent 10 minute mix. Hoops Gaming asks, On the topic of the Genesis, do you think that Streets of Rage 3's soundtrack deserves the hate it gets? I really do not. Uh, I understand why it gets the hate, but uh, it sets out to do something and it does it really well. I love the random generation approach that Yuzo took, but also I love like stupid avant junk like that anyway. Especially when you place it behind Oons, which is exactly what they did. And even without the oons, uh, stuff like Bad End is just a really good piece of atonal music. The only complaint I really have about the soundtrack is that the dynamics are a bit flat, but it's so far ahead of its time that I don't know if I can actually complain about that. It's good, but also don't fault you if you hate it. 
Octegkai, 40 million asks, Is there anything in particular you came across while doing research for your artist's future videos that surprised you? Uh, the thing that keeps surprising me is learning that composers that are known for, like, X-Style would go on to later write Y-Style. For example, uh, June Chikuma. Uh, her d and flavor Bomberman work blew me away, so I went digging to see what other d and stuff has she done. Turns out she's a huge fan of Arabic flute. Like, what? Nathan McCree going from Skeleton Crew to Tomb Raider was also surprising, but not as much, I guess. I, mean, I guess I can see it now. Broadly speaking, the methods are less surprising since it seems like half the musicians back then were writing everything in a simply anyway. John Bennett asks, what's a non-VGM album you put on to listen to all the way through? So I use Shuffle all the time, so this is actually kind of hard to answer, but uh, thinking about it for a while, it's got to be Black Moth Super Rainbow's Cobra Juicy. I love every single song on that album, and when I'm in the mood for that album, nothing else can really interject in there. Even the newer Black Moth Super Rainbow album is... it's a different vibe. It's similar, but let's usually stick to one or the other. RT55J asks, What non-game music do you listen to? Lots. Uh, mostly assorted electronic stuff, but I also like to dig around for proggy junk, and fusion, and probably some other stuff. Uh, lately I've been digging uh, Cabris. Fires of the Mind asks, what era of graphics do you prefer? So, lately I've been enjoying the resurgence of like low-poly PS1 era graphics, but I also really enjoyed the N64's terrible filtering more than the unfiltered texture you see on that resurgence stuff. That might just be a personal nostalgia thing, though. If you had to pick an album to be converted to pre-CD game audio music, which album would it be and what console would it use? Uh... I could probably think of a more definitive answer given time, but like, wow, can you imagine Alan Holdsworth's Ad of a Cron on the Mega Drive? I'm not even sure there's enough channels to flesh out the voicings, but I'd love to hear that, especially with the care from, like, Savage Regime. I, I want that. A more general answer that I can't quite think of is uh, something modern classical on a 2A03 plus VRC6. Something like uh, Bella Bartok's uh, St String Quartet number 5. <laughs> The only reason I mention that in particular is because it's the only thing I have saved that I can remember where to find off the top of my head. But I, I'd love to hear something like that with square waves instead of strings, because I'm biased against strings. But I love the composition. Niku4211 says, Hey, what do you think about trackers like Open, Mod Plug Tracker, Fast Tracker 2, Pro Tracker, Impulse Tracker, Stream Tracker 1, 3, etc. Um, OpenMPT was my window into music making, so... I love it, and I still use it. Uh, the other trackers I respect, but I don't really use them, like even Renoise. As for the um, .it to SPC converters, I'm happy they exist, but I'd really like a SNES native tracker to come out. That'd be really nice. I'll take what I get, I guess. So I got a few questions about how do I find all the music that I feature, and it's a process. So first I'll select a console, and then I'll look up every single list of games that I can find. As There doesn't seem to ever be a, like, here's a complete list of every game. So I'll combine all these lists, purge the duplicates, and then just start digging. The process literally takes months, which is why this channel only focuses on one console at a time. As for this uh, second question from Nojo2, I have heard of Battle Gattaca, but uh, only through the remake, because, uh, wow, that's a fun romp. Has some bangers. And Jakazid. Murthan H asks, Will we see any more of the documentary-style videos in the future? Uh, yes. I'm working on one right now about how to make SNES music, but there's not an equivalent to Jones for the SNES. So, the, my research has been all over the place. 
depending on where my research trail goes, I might end up just making that a video of here's all of my findings and the bajillion ways to make music. Instead of like, here's SNES gems. Sims. Centrilocus asks, what goes into the process of creating a mix on this channel? I made some videos about my process a while ago and they're still pretty accurate. Uh, also, what YouTube's auto answer button said. Tails1993.5 asks, how do you choose which songs are included in a mix? So I'll make a short list of songs that loosely fit a theme that I've decided on, and then I'll look through that list and try to find what I think would be a strong opener, or I'll look for a song that like needs to be in the mix, and then build around that. Uh, as for picking the individual songs that appear before or after that, it's just... Uh, I look at everything, from instrumentation to tempo to key to just general feel. Sometimes I do need to change the instrumentation if like everything but that will match. But yeah, I don't know, it's a lot to think about at any given moment. RT55J asks, What system libraries are you most interested in exploring after you're done with the SNES? And honestly, uh, the PlayStation 1, because that era of like late 90s, everything is 3D and red book, but our synths are still cheap, really appeals to me, and I look forward to exploring it. Adrian F asks, uh, What system are you going to make mixes of after you finish with the SNES? Uh, that's a different answer. I'm going to uh, focus on either the NES or the Master System. I'm probably just going to put up a poll right before I make the move and see what happens from there. Knuckles Knuckles asks, What does the future of this channel look like to you? How long can you see yourself producing content for it? I'd like to keep making mixes and uh, shifting focus from console to console until I get to a non-retro generation. And after that, I'll just make artist features until the sun goes out, I guess. Like, if I get tired of making one type of content, I'll just switch. But also, but I don't know, I suck at planning ahead, so take my every word with a grain of salt. Pop Music Killer asks, Have you considered more videos covering game franchises? Uh, this is something I've thought about, but haven't pursued yet because uh, that would overtake the artist's future, and there's a lot of artists that I want to future. It might become a uh, thing that I do after I uh, like get to a modern generation, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. LFC Gamer and Vlogs asks, Have I considered doing an artist feature for Rob Hubbard or David Whitaker? Yes to both. Uh, Rob Hubbard especially, because he saw it as an inspiration to other old school legends. Uh, it'll happen one day. Just don't know when. Rorixp for p says, have you considered changing your channel name to something that doesn't contain kanji or kana? And uh, I've gotten this a lot and it seems to have increased recently. Uh, yeah, it's been on my mind since I started, basically. I'm in a weird spot though where I don't want to change my branding too much, but I do want to be discoverable. Uh, the GST part seems pretty solidly established, so I kind of want to keep that. That just means changing the last bit, which would be, I don't know, GST Heart? It sounds bad. GST Love? It sounds awkward. After a lot of overthinking, though, I've decided to just change the channel name to GST Channel, starting uh, right now. It keeps everything but makes the channel easier to search, hopefully. Tetrachromahedron asks, Are there any plans to do a GST mix with on a more uh, niche hardware series like the PC-98 or uh, Amiga? And yes, definitely. The only difference is um, I'm going to focus on the systems rather than chipsets. So I'll probably combine the PC-88 and 98 together. The only problem with that though is uh, the arcades. Because that's a really, really broad category and I don't know how I'm going to tackle that yet. But nah, we'll get there when we get there. Pobert E asks, Have you ever considered doing a full-on Foon and writing a book about the miscellaneous things you've found? The thought has never crossed my mind, honestly. I'm not even sure a book would be the best medium for that. B. Ron E. Fausta asks, I love Sega Bass. It's like the OG dubstep, besides frogs and those sticks you blow into. Any chance of making a vid show in the extremity of those bouncy, twangy capabilities someday? Uh, so yeah, I don't plan on revisiting any Mega Drive stuff, uh, though I will look into other systems with FM chips eventually. Uh, luckily for you, I've made a few mixes with that sort of thing already. The third GST and GST++ mix were based on FM Funk, and the artist feature for Mark Miller is filled with that as well. 
Uh, the features for Matt Furness and Jesper Kidd aren't focused on that specifically, but I think you might dig those as well. So uh, look into that. Tell me what you think. Tetrachromahedron asks, I miss those little doll preview of things that would pop up from time to time between songs in your earliest vids. Uh, would you ever bring that back? So, I do like those as well, but they're surprisingly tedious to make and just not worth it in my opinion. Especially since I've refined my workflow. It's gotten to the point where I finalize the audio as I'm editing the video, so the preview would end up changing and I have to re-record it if I did include it, or do it at the very last thing, which that's no fun. So yeah, it's probably not coming back, sorry to say. Ilford Official asks, ever have intentions of making any long-form content where you talk about Genesis music? In short, no, but mostly because I don't have any particular thing to say. I do have plans for more narrated videos though, for whatever that's worth. Tyson's Creations asks, Do you have any musical training or have you studied musical theory in any depth, or did you just get good at mixing through sheer practice? Yes. Uh, well, I started making music in 2005 and sucked at it, but kept going anyway. And uh, as I improved, I became interested in the theory surrounding it, but I've never taken any formal classes. Then in uh, 2013, I discovered Ableton Live, which opened the doors to uh, mixing, which happened to mesh really well with how I wrote music already, so it just kind of snowballed. But yeah, nothing formal. Mostly osmosis, I guess. Smith Smithany asks, do you produce or write any music yourself? And uh, yep, since 2005, uh, I've got uh, House. <laughs> Uh, chill out stuff. It's proggy something. Chip tune. Whatever this is. Yeah, mostly I like to experiment lately. Uh, you might have seen this mashup I made. It's like the single most popular thing I've ever done. I don't really know what to talk about with my own music though, honestly. I, I sure do make it. Fishfinger Remix asks, What is your first or earliest memory of being touched by video game music? So, as a kid, I remember loving the soundtrack to the N64 version of Vigilante 8. Uh, what I don't remember is pressing a tape recorder against the TV to record the soundtrack so I could listen to it on the go. Somewhat recently I rediscovered this tape, and I uh, thought that was pretty cool because that's a really common story among older VGM enthusiasts that I've talked to. Everybody seems to have their own tape of the game music they recorded as the genesis of their appreciation for game music. And so do I. Madzy9 asks several questions. Uh, one. When did you discover your interest in video game music, particularly VGM artists as opposed to scores from individual games? Some of my earliest experiences on the internet were on OC Remix, so that quickly led to an appreciation of the artist behind the games, so I guess age 14? It's been a while. 2. What made you start the YouTube channel? Did you have any goals other than being a creative outlet? And three, without exposing yourself too much, where are you in your life? Do you have any other interesting hobbies apart from making these amazing mixes? Um, so basically I kept finding all this cool music and I wanted to share it, but I didn't want to clutter up my personal YouTube channel. And I thought this idea of making uh, monthly mixes would be a really nice concept for its own channel. And uh, besides being a creative outlet and a way to share music I like, I thought it'd be a pretty cool way to like 
start a Patreon and get that sort of thing going to maybe live off of the support of the fans from this channel one day. Because, uh, you see, I'm in a weird, precarious spot in my life. I'm a bit surprised that Kraut Supreme pinned this on me, but uh, yeah, I was a software engineer for a while. Uh, however, uh, it was sending me into the big sad, which got considerably worse when my entire department was laid off one time, one day. I ended up starting this channel after I recovered from that a bit, and uh, now I'm just barely scraping by on part-time work, but I'm okay for now at least. Hobbies though? Uh, original music I guess. I've been playing with AI stuff for a while, but there's not much to show. I like to play with animations, but haven't really made anything complete. I made a game once. Friendship is an emergent phenomenon. Yep, Rooney asks, Are you single? <sighs> um, so... I had pretty much given up on the idea that I could ever love or be loved until recently. Uh, a girl came out of nowhere and convinced me that both of these were possible. I don't want to divulge too many details, but that's been a new chapter in my life, and it's something I'm still growing used to. Uh, but it's a nice chapter. Last set of questions from Seinfeld. Are you still using Ableton Live on Windows? I am, although I'll switch to Duffel Mask or Family Tracker or even Open Mod Plug Tracker whenever I need uh, some work done on a different chipset to mix in there. 2. How much of the work is done on Linux? Very little, if any. The gems stuff that you saw was mostly just building on top of R57 Shell's work, and he seems to be very Linux focused, so that's where I had to follow. 3. How'd you first come in contact with the retro game music community? Did you witness the golden days of tracking music? Yeah, I was lurking in the OC Remix forums as early as 2005, but I didn't really participate until 2008 or 9 on the now defunct 8-bit collective. Uh, everything prior to that is me uh, digging around, and a lot of it still is, but I have picked up some people within the VGM circles that I like to talk to and uh, get involved with sometimes. 4. What would we expect the next era of GST to be? We're gonna go back to the 8-bit era next. Or more specifically, I'd like to shift to uh, PSG kind of focus. Uh, look through all the you know, earlier consoles and computers and then work my way back up to recent stuff. Then I'll probably run out of consoles and just do artist features or something, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's a long future, but I wanted to explore everything. And uh, you guys are on the journey with me, so we'll see where it goes. And that's all the questions I received. Uh, just a few more thoughts before I end. Um, I read every comment that I get, provided that YouTube decides to notify me of the new comments. And uh, I love all the comments I get. You guys are a lovely community. Uh, I'm also always keeping an eye on the Discord server, so feel free to join me in there if you want to chat. Uh, thanks for 10,000 subs, and let's do this again for 20,000. See you next vid.